One of the reasons why I like working on audio equipment so much is I get to see and hopefully understand a large variety of circuit designs across manufacturers and across time. Specifically, I like looking at audio protection circuits, the circuits that protect the amplifier itself or your speakers, usually through components like these. So in this video, I'll go over the protection circuit for an amplifier that I recently worked on, the Parasound HCA2003A. We'll start with the relay drive circuit under normal operating conditions, so when the relay is active or engaged. So for a moment, ignore these three nodes labeled one, two, and three. We have our relay here with B minus, or our negative supply rail on one side. So on the other side, we need something more positive to turn that relay on. To do that, we'll start with our positive supply rail, B plus up here. That will drop across this Zener diode. We'll turn this transistor on, and we'll turn this transistor on. With this transistor on, current will flow from ground through the transistor, through our relay, to the B minus or negative supply rail, turning on the relay. That's under normal operating conditions. So what can prevent that? Well, if any one of these sub-protection circuits, that's what these nodes are, is engaged or enabled, the B plus will bypass our relay drive circuit and it will flow through that enabled sub-circuit. So let's take a look at those sub-circuits. Sub-circuit one is over temperature. There's a thermal switch like this mounted on each heat sink to monitor the temperature. Under normal operating conditions, when the temperature is low enough, this switch is closed and we have B plus sitting at this node. But when the temperature of the heat sink is too high, higher than the limit of the switch, the switch will open. We no longer have B plus sitting at this node, but we have ground. So now we have a path from B plus through node one to ground that will bypass our relay drive circuit. Sub-circuit two is over current. Here we have the output of the amplifier. So our positive and negative supply rails, the final output transistors on the positive and negative side, their respective emitter resistors, and finally the output to the relay and hopefully the speaker. The function of this transistor is to monitor the current through and thus the voltage across the two emitter resistors. Under normal conditions, the current through these resistors will be low enough such that this transistor will be off. But in a fault condition, when the current through these resistors is high enough, the voltage across this transistor will be high enough to turn it on. That will allow current to flow from B plus, through node two, through this transistor, through this transistor, and finally to our negative supply rail, again, bypassing the relay drive circuit. And sub-circuit three is DC protection. These two transistors are monitoring the output of the amplifier. Any DC voltage at the output will be stored at this point via this capacitor. Under normal conditions, the voltage at this point will be low enough such that this transistor and this transistor are both off. But in a fault condition, if the DC voltage at the output is sufficiently high, this transistor will turn on. Or if it's sufficiently low, this transistor will turn on. If either of these transistors is on, we now have a current path from our positive supply rail through node three, through the enabled transistor, again, bypassing the relay drive circuit. If you enjoyed this content and you wanna see more, I plan on making many more videos like this, analyzing the protection circuits and maybe other sub circuits for the various amplifiers and audio equipment that I work on. Some videos will be available on YouTube, others on Patreon. Thanks for watching.